Well, let's begin. Um, you surveyed Floridians about coronavirus and about the things that they're going through. Um, how many people did you survey? How did you survey? And what did you find out? So we launched a representative statewide survey of 600 Floridians uh, that uh, essentially asked uh, individuals about the state of coronavirus, uh, their own personal concerns, uh, their evaluations of government performance, as well as the ways in which their own personal finances and work life had been disrupted. So the way we went about the survey is um, this was an online survey where um, individuals were chosen um, and they were chosen based on representative nature um, so that the final sample of this survey matched the overall population of Florida based on demographics. So gender, race, ethnicity, as well as region. So we have a nice balance that way. How hard has the economic hit been to Floridians? So what we find is that two thirds of Floridians have in some ways um, faced some sort of income loss and or work disruption because of the coronavirus situation. So the results suggest that the, ec the economic impacts are widespread, but are also being disproportionately shouldered by particular segments of society. And uh, so there's racial differences, but there's also socioeconomic differences. Why don't you lay those out right now? Yeah, so what we see in the data is we see that low income Floridians in particular are actually um, the ones, uh, the individuals that are uh, really facing a disproportionate burden uh, right now. So. Uh, Low-income Floridians are saying that they are concerned about the coronavirus situation in terms of their own personal finances, but they're also ones, and let me just make sure I'm going to get the, uh, the, the stats right for you, um, but their uh, low-income Floridians are more likely to say that they have been laid off, um, that um, they are also significantly less likely to say that they were, uh, that they were financially prepared for the situation. So what this suggests is that, uh, really this is a perfect storm for both health and economic impacts where pre-existing societal inequities that, uh, have been in place, structural factors, uh, related to race and ethnicity, but also income factors as well are combining with health disparities at this particular moment to produce disproportionate impacts on particular segments of the population. And how has the coronavirus pandemic affected Floridians' lives uh, as, as far as their routines? So what we're seeing is that Floridians uh, overwhelmingly have changed the ways in which they are uh, engaging in work for example. So uh, what we find in our study, for example, is that roughly a third of households uh, have faced some work impact where individuals are now working from home, either full-time or part-time. What we also see is that one in 10 individuals that we surveyed are still employed with the same employer that they were with uh, when the pandemic began, however, have taken on new job responsibilities. So from, the, so from the work effects, what we see is really the full gamut of individuals uh, saying that they've been laid off, that they've been furloughed, that they've, had, uh, that they've had income cuts, all the way to the other spectrum, which is that uh, individuals are still working uh, in the same job, but they now have new responsibilities. So this is really important for thinking about long-term career, career and work impacts in Florida, particularly because the types of work impacts where an individual takes on new job responsibilities, as many of us know, those aren't necessarily easy to go away uh, over time. Once a person takes on new job responsibilities, they're more likely to, uh, they're more likely to continue with them uh, in their job over time. And what did you find out about how Floridians are staying connected even though there's social distance requirements? Yeah, so what we're finding is that individuals have shifted quite a bit in terms of the ways in which they are engaging in 
um, socially connected but physically distant behavior. So everything from video conferencing more to calling individuals on the phone. And what we actually find is that the overwhelming majority of individuals that we talk to have indeed been taking health related precautions and they are meeting with people physically much less than they were before this. Um, and they're shifting to more, uh, they're, uh, to more socially mediated as well as telephonically mediated uh, means of communication. And what do people miss uh, from having this social distancing in place? So it's, um, it's interesting that uh, we think about all the things that, uh, you know, the sacrifices that are being made because the not only are individuals making uh, health sacrifices, economic sacrifices, but also social sacrifices as well. For meeting with individuals to, for example, um, you know, a majority of individuals that we surveyed said uh, they missed visiting with family and friends. Uh, about four in 10 individuals that we surveyed said they missed going to the shopping mall. Uh, and uh, 41 percent said that they missed travel. So what we find is uh, we find not only sacrifices being made uh, with regard to work, with regard to economics, with regard to health, but also, but also with regard to social behavior. The interesting thing will be whether or not these continue to hold up over time. The other types of the, our, the other data in our survey suggests that a uh, majority of Floridians are still concerned that they themselves could physically it could physically contract the coronavirus in the next three months, and three quarters, about seventy six percent, say that they're concerned that someone they know will contract the coronavirus. So if we project that out over time, what this suggests is even with moves to reopen, that there will be lingering concerns in place that might still prevent individuals from engaging in the same types of behaviors they did pre-pandemic. Well, Joshua Skako, thank you so much for joining me on WMNF today. Hey, thank you, Sean. I appreciate it. All right, thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.